Hey guys, what's up? It's the Michael Twenty Seven back with another video. Here to give you guys a good review of Mirror's Edge Catalyst. Yep, that's right. I haven't done a video in a while, and I'm trying to switch up the format every once in a while. Just always keep myself on my toes, not to get stuck in the same way. So let's get into Mirror's Edge Catalyst, this new game that I picked up a few days ago, and let's see how I feel about it. More reviews will be coming soon of like, games like Doom and possibly Dark Souls 3. I'm still working on that. Alright, so let's get into the skinny of it. This is up to the hype. This is where it deserves all the criticism that it's gotten so far. And is it actually good? Let's just find out. So let's just talk about Mirror's Edge. Mirror's Edge is an action adventure first person game made by EA and DICE. DICE is known for their Battlefield games and they've basically done a good job with what they did in the past. Now, Mirror's Edge Catalyst is a reboot slash prequel to the original Mirror's Edge. However, this one is making a new universe, changing the mythos, mythos the world, and how we see it. As in the first Mirror's Edge, it was an attempt, like an experiment, to see how you can do first person parkour in a game. And to see it, first one, I really enjoyed it. But have we haven't heard anything for eight years, and eight years later, we get Catalyst, the sequel, prequel, remake. Reboot. Uh, wrong choice of words for that one. But let's just say this. Does it actually do good? Let's just talk about how it overall feels graphically. Graphically, the game has a really nice look to it. It's using the Frostbite engine, as a lot of DICE and EA games do, and it's a good job overall, let's just say that. Um, visually, um, a lot of the textures are kind of not at the top of their zone here. You can tell that there's some muddy textures and some texture popping. I don't know. If it was to keep the frame rate high, or if the game has some open world type of basis to it, but that's what we gotta deal with. All right? So overall, graphically, it's not the best as I would see in like Star Wars Battlefront or in Battlefield games. But you know, for a next gen game, there's some beautiful sights here. Right? So let's just say this: the design of the world, the city of glass, is beautiful. Let's just say that. All those graphics aren't the top-notch gameplay. Graphics we usually see in EA Dice games, it's still beautiful to look at. The, the futuristic science fiction world that they create here with the City of Glass is outstanding. And then when it comes to the nighttime, that's when you can tell the graphics are at their best. That's when the game's back. Like I said, graphics are at their best when it's at nighttime. The daytime, it looks good, but it's at nighttime it looks even better. The rain, the, the shadows, the ne neon color, light palette that they use, all of it looks cool. It looks like a a video game version of Blade Runner that isn't Deus Ex. It just looks amazing. Let's just say that. Visually, the game looks outstanding. The animations of your character look really good. It's a lot like the original game, but you can tell that there's much more added to it. So, for the story of Mirror's Edge Catalyst, it deals with you playing as Faith, the protagonist of the game, which takes place, which deals with a prequel comic that came out before the game came out. So, basically, the game starts off with you at a juvie on jail. You spent two years in it because you made a mistake and you get back out. And Faith is a runner in a city um, glass. And then there's a conglomerate that basically controls the city with wealth and control of power. And Faith is one of these runners that basically go around running and pursuing, doing jobs of delivery and just basically living a life in a different way than the conglomerate, the, con the corporations, and the rich people. Like that. So basically, the rich people have all these beautiful city, uh, beautiful locations, dresses, parties, while the couriers and the runners, they don't have that type of lifestyle, they have a small lifestyle. And basically, Faith is one of those runners. She gets back out there, she goes out running again, and while she does a job, she encounters a corporation, Krugersek, and interfering with one of their plans, mixing up the story of having Krugersek going after Faith and the runners, they take down what they believe in, and basically destroying everything that they know. And basically deals with Faith fighting back with a type of revolutionary type of feel here. It feels almost like a mixture of like a civil war type of thing. The rich and the poor going at each other. However, I feel like the story should have had much more to it. I mean, don't get me wrong, the story isn't bad or abysmal or even horrible as some critics are saying, but I just don't feel like it reaches its full potential here. I mean, there's something here that feels like it's playing out in motion. There's some twists and turns here that I found kind of ridiculous. We found out before the twists and turns happened, but overall, the story is okay. And I mean, story-wise, when it comes to games, I usually play games for story to see how it feels. I mean, there's certain games 
it's invested for that, while other games, they forget about it and mostly focus on gameplay. Right. Mm -hmm. And the story here is mostly fine. And the protagonist, Faith, is not horrible at all, in my opinion. She She's a character who's com who has conflict. She feels broken, or she also feels like she has to show this stronger side of herself, proving that she is better. And you basically learn about her origin story here, which is kind of a cool one. It, it's a lot of, like, vigilante of some sorts, but it, it's, um, it's, a, it's a serviceable story for Faith as a protagonist, and to see her progressional growth as a character slowly build out through here. And then we also have our side characters like Noah, uh, Icarus, and others, who are basically just like these characters just is there to help Faith move the story. They're basically plot points in a way. Which is sad, you know, because I feel like that with a story with this type of depth, with the rich and the poor, uh, the conglomerate, and the curious and the rudders, they basically uh, going against each other. You could expect these characters to have much more unique depth to them. Thankfully, all the characters aren't really uh, annoying. Some of them are bearable. And some of them actually have some growth to them, but they're really small. I wish there was much more to it. Now, the main story can be beaten in 10 hours, and there's also all these other side missions of doing delivery missions, doing user generator races, finding little um, beats which involve like platform puzzles. It's all fun here. So, overall, story wise, I feel like the end, uh, also, let me say, the ending of the game feels kind of not rushed, but kind of just not really. Um, Done well, in my opinion. I mean, the ending I feel there should have been more to it to really feel like it's building up a sequel. You know, because when it just ends, it ends like, like kind of almost sequel baiting it, which I don't know, which is fine, but never overdo it or feel like just cutting off half of an ending just so you think, oh, a sequel's coming. Make the game feel whole, absolute, then you can build a sequel bait. Or, or, just, or just feel like, oh, there's a sequel coming. But not too much, so that's the only thing I feel really bad about. Um, now, well, well, I'm just really wise. it's okay, it's not bad, it's not horrible, it's not outstanding, it's not going to win any awards, and overall, the story is just overall good, nothing is bad. So, as we get out of story-wise, let's go into gameplay, which really makes Mirror's Edge Catalyst one of the best reasons to play this game. Why? The parkour. Now, we've seen, uh, now, parkour was done in Mirror's Edge originally. It was such a revolutionary way of playing a parkour game in a first person game. It didn't rely on um, just relying on just like going forward, shooting at the blank blank. So this was a much more unique way of going through platform. A different way of going through parkour and controls and all the unique uh, feelings from that game. And now they use basically the same format here for this game. And now what's cool about it is the fact that it's basically the same but with little modifications little add-ons, like for example, you know, have a thing called runner's vision, which basically tells you where to go, and it points you in the direction you need to go, lighting up the direction with certain objects going red. Just like the original, it tells you, it doesn't uh, force, it doesn't tell you where to go completely, it suddenly does, with little uh, cues of, like, colors. So that's what I like about that. It, it's not forced really to be you just always uh, collect what's to find in the areas you go to when it comes to main narrative missions. You also get new abilities like a grapple hook and this um, thing that pulls things towards you or pulls like an and on its off of walls. Let me see like you go your platforming and parkour levels. It's just amazing. And like me just say the parkour is probably the best parkour in a game. I mean Dying Light was really up there. Dying Light is actually second place when it comes to parkour compared to this. I never reviewed Dying Light, but Dying Light was a zombie parkour game and it was really awesome how the parkour felt. This one Really, just top it, you know. The, 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 the games, textures don't feel complete, like it felt a little rushed. This feels like it was done to the maximum like, when it comes to parkour. You know, it all feels great. It doesn't feel wonky. It doesn't feel wrong. It may feel good because you're relying on the L1 or LB button, which you play on consoles, for your jumping most of the time. It feels weird. But after like 10 minutes, if you play the original, you'll get over it in a heartbeat. So it doesn't become that much of a problem. So that's a good controls never feel intrusive or weird. They feel just right at home, which is a good thing for this game. Now, now the parkour isn't the only thing that's in this game, of course. There's always like little add-ons, like for example, combat. So in the original game, you had a combat system, which was kind of, uh, um, not really, there wasn't that much into combat. It was only like, you dot block, you have slow mobility, you hit, and that's it. And you can also disarm enemies and take their guns and use them. 
Thank this game you don't have any gun uses. You can't use guns in this game. They took the gun ability out, so it goes against because it goes against Fate's character. You can say it doesn't really fit my character. And this one is much more of using your feet and your fists as a combat system with squares and triangles, and using the R2 to basically shift away and it was like a big space back and forth. Now the combat system overall is fine. It's nothing perfect. I mean. It, it, it's really silly when you kick someone in the head and they run into another enemy and they both collide and one of them just goes unconscious instantly. When you kick someone near the ridge edge of a, of a building, they fall over the window glass like they're in a cartoon action movie. It's fine. I, I laughed a few times, but it wasn't like horrible. I mean, it does get repetitive at times. I'll see you that. The combat system can be repetitive. Due to the fact that sometimes you're gonna be fighting the same enemies, you gotta be doing the same moves like triangle, kick someone in the head, then you go in for a three hit combo, then you kick someone in the head again, another three hit combo. It, it feels kind of like you go through the same thing over and over. However, there's some enemies that actually learn from some of your mistakes, or maybe you learn some of your moves, they got always switching up the type of things you do there. So, like, you can stun them with the ability you get later, which is a stun ability. And then you go kick in the head and you go punch punch, you know. But it, overall, the combat just doesn't feel... It's a good step in the right direction for, Mer for the, the character. But I just feel like there should have been more of it. You know, more combat abilities, you know. Like, or even not even fight anyone at all. Uh, that could have been an awesome choice. The gameplay of choice. Fight or no fight. Fight or flight. Could have been an awesome option. But overall, it's just overall uh, fine. Nothing special, nothing memorable. Um, but overall, the combat, the gameplay, there's also a progression system where you basically upgrade your character with more health, you give them the abilities of parkour lessons like uh, how our movement is done, how you can upgrade their gear, the combat system so you can make more powerful hits when you punch someone. It's all fine and it's all uh, additional. There's also collectibles of uh, which any collectible you get in the game uh, upgrade your experience points, which is always awesome to say. You know, the experience points and the feeling of it, it's all well done. Let's we'll say that. It's, it's, it, although it does make you slow down when it comes to a game you know, running, it does, it's fine for what it is, you know? So, that's what really that this gameplay really is to it. Uh, when it comes to design and sound design, it's great when you fall from a big location, you fall off a building to your doom, the wind, like when you go when you hear your character breathing in and out like a trembling type of effect, it feels great, it feels powerful, it feels like you're actually on a ceiling, you jump like a ceiling, uh, a roof of a building you jump off, you feel like that feeling of like vertigo, it has that feeling to it, which is kind of awesome. Uh, another gameplay game I really forgot to mention is you get this bar while you're running. So the more parkour it leads you to do, the more attacks you do, you basically build up this focus gym. It basically mo momentarily blocks up, blocks bullets because there's a guy that's shooting you. Overall, it's kind of I didn't really notice it. I, I noticed at times where I didn't get hit or it's like it just took my focus shield energy away, but it wasn't really as clear on how it works. But overall. Oh, a good thing. A good thing. I'm sweaty as heck, you know. I'm sweaty as heck, but I'm still doing this for you guys. All right. Now, overall sound design, music-wise, there's some good music there, but most of the time it's not really that memorable. The, like the, I, my, the best thing I remember I can remember from the first Mirror's Edge was that theme song from that scene from I'm Still Alive. You know that song out there was so great. It felt that great feeling of like hardcore, that jumping, that feeling of adrenaline, that feeling of just wow, you know. There's nothing like that here, which is kind of a shame. But overall, Mirror's Edge Catalyst just also feels kind of pushed out the door a little too quick. I think that maybe if the game came out in a month or two, came out in August maybe, and the game's textures would have been fully done, it would have been something even better. I mean, the game would have problems when it comes to its story and its combat, but overall, the rest of the game with the user face and how clear the game looks and beautiful design, you have to give the credit the developers some credit, at least. Not all the credit, but some credit. That's what matters. You know, also, there's also an online mode here. It's not really a multiplayer, as I wish there was actual multiplayer races where you race against other players online. Instead, there's time trials and dashes where you basically compete with leaderboards and you basically can hack uh, billboards, which basically allows you to have your symbol on there. Uh, for people to see when they play. However, I did not know how to do this at first. Later, I realized I had to go online to an account instead of customizing it in-game. It's kind of a stupid idea. 
I recommend customizing yourself in game instead of making me leave the game to do something else. It's kind of a stupid decision. Now, overall, Mirror's Edge Catalyst is a good game, not great. No, it's great, it's just not amazing. You know? I don't think it's horrible, I don't think it's mediocre. But there's still potential in this. While there's some wasted potential, there's some potential that's used to its full advantage. So, overall, I'm giving Mirror's Edge Catalyst a final verdict of. I, gave the, I would give the original one an 8 out of 10. And I'm gonna have to give Mirror's Edge Catalyst an 8 out of 10. I believe that both games are on par with each other. It's just as good as the original, in my opinion, because the original story was kind of forgettable, and those cutscenes. Ugh, don't even give me a start on those cutscenes in the original. They're like e insurance commercials. You know those e insurance commercials that came out years ago, right? Those forgettable ones? They're like weird looking cartoons, look swoopy like, like some water painting on drugs? It looked like that. This one doesn't have that, there's much more clear, motion captured, third person cinematic type of stuff here. So that's what's really amazing about um, how, how ridiculous some of those cutscenes in that game were. And overall, there's some great side missions in the game, great visual uh, design when it comes to art design and how the city looks. Bad things are, story isn't as high as I expected, as much as it didn't have that emotional touch for me. Uh, combat got repetitive at times, and textures were just not the top of the game, especially on PS4, which is surprising. The game runs at 60 frames per second and 1080p, or even runs at 900p. I don't even know. But overall, Mirror's Edge Catalyst has potential. It has potential to be a great franchise for DICE. You know, it's something to do that isn't Star Wars Battlefront or Battlefield. You no, know, we don't want to get tired of those games. I want to play something else. And Mirror's Edge Catalyst is a great example of going in the right direction. Just do something else with the characters, add more emotional story depth to them, and just make sure when you make the next game, make sure the textures are uh, good. Just make sure they're good. I don't want to deal with money textures or texture popping or lackluster visuals. I don't like that. Alright? So that's it for this review, guys. Please like the video, comment below, subscribe. Also, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and that's basically it, guys. I'll see you on the next video of the Michael Arte 7. See you guys next time. Bye.